What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel. Just bear with me. I mean, for God's sakes, I don't think I can I can do this for, you know, another however many get two games that we've got left. So thank you for stopping by. My name is Paul. <laughs> this is the Leeds Therapy. And uh, if you're new here, if you could hit the subscribe button, if you could also like the video for me. And um, any comments that you got, please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. Um, yeah, where do you start with that one? I don't know, is the honest answer. I genuinely don't know. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> what a, um, a very, very strange game. A very, very interesting game. Um, you take the result and you move forward. It puts us back up to second again. Um, makes the week a whole hell of a lot better for a number of reasons in terms of for the training side of stuff. And... Um, it's good that we've got another game so quickly as well, I think, because of winning and the, the confidence. We scored four goals. We are we were devoid of scoring goals for a little while. Um, we had to show heart. We had to show character. I think we showed that in abundance this evening overall. I think that the, the way we played was... Okay, it wasn't a brilliant, brilliant performance, but it's a performance where you just literally, like I say, you take the the three points and you move forwards. I think it's a com it's definitely a confidence inspiring performance. Um, I think the easiest way for me to to talk about it is to is to go through the players in terms of how I feel that they they did overall. So, in goal, Melier, a fifty fifty game with him. Um, could have done better for a couple of the goals, um, but in the main, he commanded his box quite well and w w was there when was needed. However, like I said, some of the goals were a little bit soft in terms of how they were let in. I think um, Firpo had a very, very good game, two assists again. Um, Firpo overall for me, I think, is, is has been... A very, very good player. I'm not concerned about him now like we used to be. Like, how long is it going to be until he gets his yellow card? How long is it going to be till X, Y, and Z happens? All of that kind of stuff. I am pleased for him. And again, I know it's the, the level of the championship, etc., so on and so forth. But you, you, you take the points and you move forward. And that's, you know, that's what we good. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant cross for Bamford's goal. Um, was just overall very very pleased for him and he set up Cree's goal really really well so overall like I said good performance for him did really really well um, I'm going to put Ampadu and Rodon together um, and for me I thought not their greatest game but they were steady away even though we conceded three goals um, I can't really put them at fault too much for the first goal because the ball takes a wicked deflection off of Ampadu and then Melier coming out shouldn't have come out like he did but like I said that ball takes a really really mental deflection off of off of Ampadu and it, it's just it's just one of those things but again pretty solid covered well closed down well overall an okay game passable just not not the strongest game overall Byram on the right hand side I thought looked a little bit tired um didn't for me have his best game that he's ever had but again was solid and dependable and we move into the midfield. Gruev, or as I'm now going to call him, Go Go Gadget Gruev. Um, brilliant again. He goes, he's so under the radar in terms of what he does. And he's just always there. Uh, his, his tracking back, his, his game sense awareness, his positional awareness. I thought he had a very, very good game. Really, really good game. Although whoscored.com have not given him the highest... Mark, I think they gave him a 6.6 .6 overall, but again, I feel like he had a good game um, and played very, very well for me. Gray took a little while to get into the game, um, but again, he's been playing right back all season, so you would expect that to a certain degree. But then, obviously, his run for the Nonto goal was was 
was great that just that charging run and he does that so well as he grows into the game great in terms of taking the ball and running out of danger so I mean he's 18 years old the sky's the limit I mean he got absolutely hatcheted on the byline and I just really like the fact that he stands up and, and acts like I'm, I'm not taking that kind of shit you can do what you what you think you want to do to me but I'm I'm not going to take it I love that about him I love that he's got that bit of devilment and spite about him it's it's a really really great thing for him to have um Rutter ah oh, Jorginho he is it, well, he's mercurial isn't he we've we've had this we've had this conversation before in terms of what he does and how he plays he lost the ball a lot but then also as well he moves into takes on players takes players out of you saw everything from him tonight the frustration of losing the ball getting in on the ball spinning players moving players uh, just that that penetration that he can actually bring which is the real annoyance about him in terms of watching him play um i thought th- in terms of that was good in fact no i'll come on to that in a second nonto love nonto throughout took his goal really really well um yes he was offside but i thought he had a very very good game was charging stuff down was tough in the tackle was difficult to play against um I think on who scored.com 8.2 rating for for Nonto was was pleased with him overall thought he had a, a decent game Somerville on the left hand side Cree's just Cree isn't he he you know takes his penalty really really calmly we did the same thing again Bamford stood there holding on to the ball everyone's like oh no Bamford's gonna take it and it's like no I'll pass it on to Cree let's let our player of the year do what he needs to do lovely penalty into the bottom left hand corner Keeper nearly gets to it, but he's got enough power and pace on it to to score the goal. And then his his second goal, it's it's what Cree does, isn't it? And again, that comes from Rutter charging through ball to Furpo, Furpo through onto Somerville, and then you can see what he's going to do. He's got two players in front of him and just whips the ball beautifully, absolutely beautifully. Um, and it's when you see those goals where it it kind of curves round. I was watching um, Leeds lately. Um, watch along and he said the same thing that I thought it's when that that ball touches the um the 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 inside of the uh of the net like that and just kind of curves its way around it's just such a wonderful thing to watch um the thing that was interesting about the way that they played I felt was that the there was a little bit of an interchange that went on where they kind of all of the midfield the, the attacking midfielders anyways they moved position quite interestingly so I think what happened was is Nonto was on the right hand side. Cree then went to the middle. No, sorry, that's not right. Cree was on the right hand side. Nonto was in the middle, and um, uh, um, Rutter was on the left hand side. And Rutter just charged in, which is what got us the penalty. Ridiculous challenge with that from Rutter, but that was a really interesting thing that seemed that happened a couple of times in the first half. Was a little bit of interplay and changing of positions. Um, through our attacking midfielders and the thing that's the thing that's important about that is that it makes it difficult for defenders because as the game kind of squares on and Luke said this on on the Just Joe podcast that I was thank you know thanks again to Joe for inviting me on when you're playing against the same player for like 90 minutes or 100 minutes or whatever you kind of get a bit used to how they're playing and what they're doing and the interesting thing was if you move them the players switch around a little bit which they're capable of doing um just it makes it more difficult for the defenders and it just creates more opportunities for us I mean we could have won that game by five or six goals potentially there's a couple of moments where DJ just shoots rather than trying to wait for the ball and Bamford puts that other one away which was a good save by the keeper but Bamford should be burying that but I, I don't care he's there to make the he, he got the goal which was which is the main thing um we could have won, like I said, six, you know, six, two, six, three overall. But the thing for me was the second half. I I really struggled to work out what was going on. I thought, what's Fark told them? Because this is weird the way that we're actually playing. And it was I I thought as the half kind of wore on because I think for um, when by the time we got our fourth goal. In the second half, Middlesbrough had eighty percent possession, and we'd had twenty percent possession. Um, and it was it was just interesting that we caught them on the break and scored that goal in that way. 
and that kind of knocked the wind out of their sails a little bit and then we just kind of held back and defended again and defended again and defended again and we actually defended all right the their third goal was silly Melier shouldn't have been Melier was very much in no man's land there for me and just should have done should have been in a little bit positionally a little bit further back and moving back a little bit but again it's I'm kind of clutching at straws here because I don't want to criticize the players because we took the three points and we moved forwards but I think they are points that should be mentioned overall and like I said the important thing to remember is is that's in the last 10 games that's Middlesbrough's first loss in 10 and that's important regardless of whether or not they're, they're drawing very many games where they hadn't lost in 10 games and as we can attest to on that mammoth run that we went on at the at the start of this year you, the, the, there's you can't legislate for the the feeling of not losing a game it becomes a habit and it's a difficult thing to break and it's a difficult thing for for a team to go to a place where where again teams are not used to losing and for us to take the three points it's really really important I think if had we not won tonight I think that that would have been us for the playoffs pretty much but like I said us winning and then another game against QPR coming up who again have very have had over the last five or six games have had very very in, indifferent form and I'm not saying that that guarantees us a win any stretch of the imagination at all but that same team turns up that turned up tonight in terms of the attacking side of things we're in with a really good chance and the important thing is is that we we need that six points we need to be finishing that game off on Friday night with six points with a four point lead over Ipswich going into the Saturday's run of games so it puts the pressure more on Ipswich if that makes sense that's what we need them to do so oh that's where we need it to be overall so like I said I don't know what I'm going to do with myself now I'm absolutely wired um I went on the the Just Joe podcast and it you know you just kind of go in I just don't know what to do with myself now I might go take my dog for a walk or something or go have something to eat I don't know but just we take the three points we move on we praise the team good we soaked up the pressure quite well overall I think we swept up quite well but yeah like I said it's weird these midweek games are weird because you've got kind of like no time to relax I've got work tomorrow and I'm just kind of like pff, don't know what to do with myself now but yeah overall I'm pleased three points we take it we move and we we, we go on to, to the next game on Friday that's going to do it for this one let me know what you think in the comment section down below who had a good game who had a bad game what should we done? What shouldn't we have done? Talk amongst yourselves, argue amongst yourselves, all of that kind of good banter. But yeah, um, if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. Um, like I said, like the video. And um, yeah, like I, I'm, I'm drained. I'm physically drained. I've had nervous wheeze. I've had nervous poos this evening. Too much coffee, so a lot of nervous pooing. Um, I was worried about tonight, but you know, you've got to have faith. And that's, that's the thing that's important. And it was funny when the team was mentioned overall, just that um, at the at the at seven o'clock this evening and everybody was just like, oh my God, da, 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 da. And it was just like, oh, we've lost then, have we? Should we just give up and just not bother? But yeah, it's Leeds United. It, it does what it does, doesn't it? It's just, like I said, it's what it's one of those things. I'm rambling now for rambling's sake. I'll um, I'll see you on, um, on, on Friday. I'll try and get a, um, a preview game in. Apologies for the lack of videos. I've had stuff going on, so I've just needed to deal with that. But um, yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Take care. Thank you for stopping by.